right, so today we're getting into lettering Annabelle issue two. This is gonna be, you know, pretty quick video here. Um, three separate pages that I'm lettering. Again, this is like sped up, but this shows you issue two we're working on and we're just gonna get right into this. So I'm um, basically, I do a lot of copying from issue one, like I'll copy those uh, illustrator files and then I'll just save them out as issue twos. Uh, rename the files. I set up all my templates and things like that. This is a template from Ready Comics, which is the company that I use to publish Annabelle. And now I'm going in and, you know, literally just copying my script. Uh, everything that's said, I'm just going to copy it over there. Pretty boring stuff right here. Just changing the font size to the right point. And, you know, a lot of this is just coming in here, you know, copy pasting and really tweaking, you know, adjusting the word balloon sizes. People tend to do this a different way. I like Illustrator. I like having the, the full control, having everything as vector, which is different than Photoshop. Allows things to be saved out, nice and clean, uh, ready for print. I save everything out um, as 400 DPI. I feel that's a, a Happy medium where it's not too big, too small. Some people go to 600 DPI, but you know, right here I'm just thinking how are these letters, how these words, character count, all that, how does it work within the word balloon? How does that word balloon work within the space that the artist gave me, Sergio? How can I make it fit better? You know, there's a lot that I'm really thinking about right now. A lot of it is like, oh, does it work on the left side or the right side? taking in consideration the actual template from the publisher because there is definitely a safe space for me to keep lettering, to keep art all within this area, you know, just to make sure that nothing's going to get cut off. They also show that there's like a trim so that they, these books will be trimmed. You know, I think it's like an eighth of an inch, uh, but these are all the specs that, you know, I had to do a lot of research on uh, being a, designer for the last you know 15 plus years you know i understood a lot of the print side of things so i understood trim bleed you know but if you don't understand those terms you know it's, it's something if you want to get into comic book publishing or comic book artwork in general you want to understand these terms trim bleed you know things like that because it really does help you know understanding these terms and how they relate to comics in general on a finished product you know, here I'm just going in again, changing what the, the words are, you know, changing the phrase just to make it fit a little bit better, posing more of a question than anything else. And then I'm getting into the next page here. Here you see me just grabbing a whole chunk of the script. You know, the first page, I just grabbed the words. Here I grabbed like the whole chunk. So it seems like it goes faster than it kind of does. You know, it just really depends on, you know, character count, how many words are in each word balloon. And, you know, you see here, you know, I've been jumping back from page two and three, but, you know, this is page two and then I'll get into page three here in a second. You know, I tend to work very assembly line-ish, especially when I did Ice Pick. I did all my lay, I, you know, I wrote all four issues uh, together. Then I basically started with issue one and I just took that script did the layouts, all the layouts, then I did all the pencils, all the inks, all the coloring, and all the lettering. So to me, things are very assembly line. I feel for my workflow, that's the most efficient way I work. Um, you know, I have some templates of some vector files that are word balloons, thought balloons, you know, different sound effects. Uh, but back to my point on, on how long it takes to really letter a page, you know, that could be anywhere from 10, 15 minutes to a half hour, really. Uh, it just depends on how much, how many words are there. Me being the writer of these books, I have the luxury of really going in and adjusting the script as I see fit. You know, I wrote this script probably over a year ago and wow, it's been almost two years now. And, and by doing that, you know, it's old, right? By having that script two years old, it really comes down to, you know, terms and making sure that like everything flows and, you know, you're writing something and you think it's great, you're drawing something, you're like, yeah, this looks good. You go back and look the next day and you're like, well, what was I thinking? You know, and that's, that's what I do when I 
pretty much do any type of artwork, whether it is, you know, penciling, inking, coloring, even lettering. You know, lettering is an art form. I definitely believe that. Um, and there is skill to it. There's nuances in it as well. It's very uh, technical. It's, it can be very tedious, but you know, to me, there's just a calmness and a peace when I'm lettering. It, it, it's almost like a game. You know, you're trying to fit things within a panel and to make it easy for the reader to understand flow and who's speaking first, who's speaking last. How are all the words kind of flowing as a whole page, panel to panel, and then as a whole page uh, at, at once. And you can use little tricks. There's little tricks to for placement, you know, when you're looking at the whole panel. You know, typically you want to try to start, generally speaking, in top left and, and work your way down to the bottom right. I, I know other countries and books read it a little bit differently, but that's what I try to do when I, I do lettering. So you see I'm going in here and just, you know, finishing up Luke's word balloon, adjusting the little circles, adjusting it as a whole, and making sure everything works together. Here's an interesting little thing that I like to do for certain words. You know, if I want to emphasize certain words, you can bold them, but you can also have the word, the part of the word come out of the word balloon. Now this honestly may not be the most efficient way to do this. Uh, I learned a letter kind of on the fly, watching stuff online, reading professional letterers and, and the do's and don'ts and what they recommend doing. So I, I try to stay true to that as far as like I, I true to what the professionals say to do and don't do. Uh, I still feel my lettering is, is definitely amateur at best, but I think it's, it's good. You know, it works and it gets the story across and it doesn't need to be amazing or flashy or anything like that. Um, I approach lettering as I do everything with my you know, art and publishing career here is, is I just want it to look good and, you know, get the point across. Artwork wise, I try to do things that are more like cool, like is, does this look cool? And, you know, by doing that, you're not always going to be anatomically correct. You know, you're not always going to be, you know, perspectives may not always be 100% accurate, uh, but I like to try to have that cool factor with my art. Uh, but back to lettering, you can see I'm just really adjusting the words in the actual balloons. And here you could see, you know, the exclamation points, they pop out of that, the word balloon. And, you know, I think that's a nice way to like emphasize that word, hey, uh, like he's yelling and, you know, this guy's running away and we don't know who he is yet, but we're gonna find out. And so again, page three, you know, each page here, I kind of picked, chose these pages cause it's nice cause each page has something a little bit different to offer. Uh, this one has a sound effect and the other one had a, a word popping out of the word balloon and it gives you a little insight on my technique, my workflow, how I like to do things. Typically I'll have, I'll letter about 11 pages at a time. Um, I tend to break the issue into half and then I'll go back and open all, you know, 20 plus pages and look at them as a whole when I'm done lettering to make sure before I finalize everything. But here, this page has actually a lot more words on it. You know, Luke is telling Adam like, you know, dude, I don't know if we should be following this guy. And you know, Adam wants to go find Annabelle. So it, it's important that what is said on this page is said. Uh, I try when I am writing books or scripting things out, uh, I try to keep that in mind when I'm actually doing the, say the Word doc, or I use pages because I'm on a Mac, but you know, whatever software you want to use to write out a script, by all means, use whatever program works. But I try to be mindful of that is, I don't like reading comics with a lot of words. By all means, if, if the words are important and they need to be there, yeah, definitely put them in there. But when I'm doing comics, I try to be mindful of over use of words. You know, I try to use words that, or statements, things that are relevant to the story that keep the story progressing. And this is, page is a prime example of that. I'm, you know, I'm in here, I'm trying to adjust the word balloons. I'm going in and making sure that everything flows and everything kind of fits, right? So it, it's easy to understand. And, and you can see that I'm kind of struggling. I, I really don't like what's going on here with the, the words. I'm, I'm rewriting it as I'm lettering. You know, that's another perk of me being the writer kind of letterer as I can sit there and say, oh, dude, this is way too many words. Let's get that point across using less words. And I think, 
you know, that not only benefits the reader, but you know, it does make the workflow a lot quicker and a lot easier. Um, so, you know, I used these connecting tails as, as Luke made a thought and then he kind of paused and then, you know, he had something else to say. Well, just going in here and, and re really reworking that word balloon, reworking the placement here, making sure that I'm really happy with how the tails are looking, you know, the placement. I end up moving that word balloon. I really don't like it sitting on Luke's head. Like that's one thing, you know, just to be mindful of is where the art is and, and that can determine where your word balloons go. And that's the importance of working, you know, with an artist that's willing to take that in consideration when, you know, they're drawing, they need to understand that there's a lot of words here on this panel. So, you know, give me space. And there I go, adjusting that, making sure that that's where I want it to be. And, you know, I keep working on that, that tail, the connecting tail here, and making sure that that word balloon flows really nice between one word balloon, pause in his thought, and then I end up, you know, having the second thought. Here we have an off panel word balloon, which is kind of, you know, a trick to use as well, a technique where Luke says something off panel, and then I get working on these uh, sound effects here. Uh, you know, using this sound effect that I already used for Kerr. Like the dragons have this sound effect. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. You know, if it's a sound effect, maybe you change it up a little bit. But at the end of the day, like if it's the same sound effect, you know, make it work. And here I'm going in, I really don't like the placement of the word balloons for Adam. Um, he speaks first, then Luke speaks, and then Adam speaks again. So that's another thing you can do to have, you know, connecting word balloons. So here I'm just tweaking up the final things. We're gonna wrap this video up. And like I said, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that like button. It really does help out this channel and I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next time.